Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. We encourage you to use your worship aids to more fully participate in today's Mass. Our presider today is Father Ed Benorni. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and the strength of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather to celebrate this Holy Mass, and as we do, we take this moment acknowledging and confessing our sins. As we confess, we ask God's forgiveness, trusting that his mercy will make us worthy to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. 
You were too strong for me, and you triumph. All the day, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul 
to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory, glory to you, to you lord jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebu rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> One of our presidents, John F. Kennedy, he wrote a book in 1956. It was entitled, Profiles in Courage. And in that book, he wrote about the lives of eight different people, and he spoke of courage as grace 
under pressure. Grace under pressure. He also said that in whatever arena of life where we are called to be courageous, there will be sacrifices that we are called to make. And the stories of courage, he said, from the lives of those who have gone before us, they can teach us about courage. They can offer us hope for courage. They can inspire our courage. However, they cannot supply courage itself. For this, he said, each person must look into his own soul and look to God himself. Now I mention all of this because in each of our scripture readings for today, we are presented with persons of courage, persons of courage from our great faith tradition. And they are persons of courage, hopefully, who continue to inspire courage in each one of us. Now, perhaps the most obvious person of courage in our readings for today is Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet to the people of the kingdom of Judah. And Judah, at that time, was in a situation where its leaders, they were looking for help from just about every source they could think of, except from the one sure source of help that Jeremiah recommended, and that was God himself. Well, unfortunately, Jeremiah's message was one for which he was mocked, he was ridiculed, he was even persecuted. And for the courage then to continue on, Jeremiah looked into his soul to find the courage he needed to preach God's message. And eventually, he would find that courage that he needed in God himself. It was God who gave Jeremiah the courage to continue to speak God's truth as he would continue to speak God's message to his people. And then there was that message that Jesus brought, which was also somewhat unpopular. In fact, there were times when even his own disciples were unwilling to accept it. But during those times when Jesus would go off by himself and he would pray, he may well have been praying for the courage to carry on. Jesus, like Jeremiah and the other prophets, he would look into his deepest self and he would find that courage to keep speaking his words and working his works. And Jesus would challenge his own followers to be just as courageous. Courageous in taking up their crosses, carrying on his ministry. And Jesus, of course, did not hesitate to admit that their courage would also be met with suffering. It would call for sacrifices because he knew that courage, it shines most brightly when it is te tested in the crucible of struggle and pain. But then Jesus also knew that they, his disciples would need heroes to teach them about such courage, to offer them hope for courage, heroes who would inspire their courage. And so down through the ages, we have so many saints who have modeled that virtue of Christian courage for us. And especially prominent among them would have to be the author of that New Testament reading that we had today, St. Paul. St. Paul, in those pastoral letters that he wrote to the early Christian church, his courage lighted the way for so many generations of Christians. In that second reading today, his letter to the Romans, 
Paul speaks of the great challenge of true, faithful, and courageous Christian discipleship. And he challenges us to know and to do what is God's will. To know and do what is God's perfect way. Rather than conform ourselves according to the ways of contemporary culture, those ways which are too often so contrary to our Christian faith and to gospel values. This is something that Jesus and his disciples, the prophets and Paul himself, they did this day after day. And they urge us to do likewise. As St. Paul says, by offering ourselves, offer ourselves as a living sacrifice joined to the eternal and living sacrifice of Christ. And in this way, our courage, our struggles, and the crosses that we bear, they will be consecrated to become our very prayer of praise and thanks to God as he continues day after day to encourage us and help us to be courageous to be courageous disciples of Christ. Together we now make our profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. Sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now as we pray our prayers of the faithful, we come with hopeful hearts as we seek God's understanding and his love as we humbly offer these prayers of supplication. For Pope Francis, may the Holy Spirit continue to help him persevere in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God inspire them in working to protect the sanctity of life in all stages. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all communities here and around the world to be vigilant attentive and proactive in the eradication of COVID-19 and other viruses and diseases that create fear and suffering and often result in death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students and educators returning to school, that they will approach their challenges in today's world with a love and understanding we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For this community of faith, may God increase in us the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithfully departed, especially Raul Vasquez and Elizabeth Adams, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer and pray these prayers through Christ our Lord. For those children who are here for this Mass, we will take up a children's collection. I will bring a basket down in front of the steps here in front of the altar. Uh, children may come and put their money in that collection basket. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. <clears throat> In all his holy church. 
O Lord, may this sacred offering confer on us always the blessing of salvation so that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, he canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we now sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Lord, you are holy indeed, for you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of the death and the resurrection of Christ, we offer you, Lord God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As you come for Holy Communion, <clears throat> we'll ask the people on the south side to come first down the center aisle. We'll have a Eucharistic minister to assist with giving communion out. And then the north side can come down for Holy Communion after the south side has come through. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O Lord, as we have been renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you that being that with this being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. A few announcements to share with you. On Labor Day, which is uh, September 7, uh, the daily mass schedule will be as usual. Uh, there will be mass at 7 o'clock that morning and at 5.30 that afternoon on Labor Day, in case you were wondering. You're welcome to sign up for our Generations of Faith. You can do that online. Uh, that site can be found in your bulletin. Also, there will be a parent meeting for all those students who are going into First Holy Communion and Confirmation. That meeting will be held tomorrow, Monday, August 31st, at 6.15, a quarter after 6, uh, here in the parish hall at the cathedral. And the ministry schedules for September have been sent out by email. However, hard copies are available in the altar server sacristy for those who do not have email. And we are in need of more hospitality ministers at each of the masses here on uh, Saturday and Sunday. So if you're interested in serving in that hospitality ministry, we ask you to please call the Cathedral Rectory office during regular business hours. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.